In this tutorial, we'll show you how to program Thymio using the VPL, the Visual Programming Language, and some good tips to follow. The micro USB cord that comes with Thymio both programs and charges the robot. You want to make sure when you're plugging in the micro USB into the robot that the larger part of the shape is upright and the smaller part of the shape is on the bottom. Then, once you've got that, you can plug the USB into the computer. Once Thymio is properly connected to the computer, click the magnifying glass and type in Aceba. Aceba Studio. So we're going to go ahead and click on Serial, and then select Thymio 2. This is telling the computer which port it needs to communicate with to reach the robot. So Serial, Thymio 2, and then click Connect. So now what we have here is the program environment. Over here, if we knew real code, we could go ahead and type code in there. We're just starting out, so the easiest way to program Thymio is to click Launch VPL. VPL stands for Visual Programming Language. So what we see here is the Visual Programming Language. Over here we have the sensors, and on the right hand side of the screen we have actions. So what it means is if the sensor event is triggered, then the action will happen. In this case we're saying if the front touch sensor is touched then the robot will drive forward. It's cause and effect. The first block we have here talks about the touch sensors. We have five touch sensors on Thymio. We have the forward touch sensor, back, left, right, and center. We can also say if I touch the forward touch sensor and the right touch sensor then make something happen. Over here we have the delete button. If we've made a mistake we can delete that line of code. Here we have the touch sensor and from this we can control the motor speed. Depending on how we have these white blocks set determines how the robot will move. This sets the target motor speed of the left motor and the right motor. Next we have the proximity sensors. There are sight sensors all around Thymio. Depending on how each one of these is clicked, it will tell Thymio if it sees something in front of it, then do this. If it sees something in front of it, then you want the red to be selected. Green means Thymio is checking to see that there is no obstacle in front of it. If you do not click red or green for a proximity sensor, it is not checking that sensor. On our action, we also can change the color of Thymio. There are three LEDs inside of Thymio at the top. There's red, green, and blue, also known as R, G, B. Right now, each of these three LEDs are off. If I slide this more to the right, I'm slowly turning on the red LED. As you can see, if I only have the red LED on, the robot would be red. If I only have the green one on, the robot would be green. And if I only have the blue LED on, the robot would be blue. But what I can do is I can mix these values in order to get different colors and you can see on the animation what happens. If I mix red, green, and blue light, you get white, and therefore Thymio would become white. This programming block lets you program the bottom proximity sensors. If it's green, it means there is nothing there. That would mean that you wouldn't want him to go off a cliff. If you choose red, it means that Thymio is on the ground. So if Thymio is on the ground, you might make him make a happy noise. 
but chances are that would get annoying pretty fast. So most likely you would say, if he's on the ground, maybe you want him to go straight, or you want to show a green color like he's ready to go. Next, we can say, if Thymio gets tapped. Thymio has an accelerometer within him, so if he senses motion, you can have Thymio turn on the lights around the touch sensors. You can either click this box once or twice and it will change the intensity of the LED. The next block we have is if it hears noise. So this uses its sound sensor. This one's a little bit tricky because what happens if you say if Thymio hears a noise, make a noise, what's going to happen? It's going to wait for a noise and then it's going to make a noise. But it's going to hear its own noise and then from that it's going to make a noise. And so what happens is you're going to hear it go over and over again and enter a loop. I wouldn't suggest that you say if Thymio hears a noise that he makes a noise because he'll just keep making noise. The same thing is true for you might not want to have him go if he hears a noise. Because what tends to happen is his sound sensor is pretty close to the motors and he hears the noise of the motors and he'll just keep driving. My recommendation is if you use the sound sensor here, you want him to use a color or create some kind of light. That way he's not generating noise and then he hears another noise. What's interesting is back here we can actually see the real code that is being compiled. We can learn to edit that a little bit later and that way we can get more custom actions. Well, after when you're done your program, you want to make sure that says compilation success. If you've made a mistake, for instance, let's say you call the same action twice. You say, if it shakes, you want this light pattern, but then you say, if it shakes, you want to call the same pair of lights. Now we actually see an error that says redeclaration of event. And you'll actually notice that this part will turn red to tell you that there are duplicates. Now in order for your program to run, you're going to have to delete one of them. Now once again we have compilation success. Once you have your program done, It's important to save early and save often. As with any kind of software, you're not sure if it may or may not crash. You always want to save your work. Pick a name and go ahead and hit save. When creating a visual programming language, it's important that you save your program in this window. Otherwise, if you save it in the more advanced window, you will not be able to go back to the easier mode. You hit the save button before you ever load and run a program. When you click load and run, it's actually going to play your program on the robot. When you hit stop, the robot is going to stop running the program. So anytime that your robot is misbehaving, go ahead and hit the stop button and it's going to stop running your program and then you can fix whatever you had going on. It's very good practice to compose one line of code at a time and load and run after each segment. If you compose a whole bunch of lines all at once, it's going to get confusing quickly and if you experience unpredictable behavior, you're not going to be sure which line of code is causing the conflict. So I'd recommend after each line of code, you hit load and run, test it out. If it's not doing what you want, maybe you need to edit that piece of code. If you want your program stored on Thymio even after you turn it off, this is what you're going to need to do. Is save your work. So we're going to go ahead over here and save and close this. Now under tools, we have an option that says write the program inside Thymio. Once we do this, Thymio is going to remember your program even when you turn it off.
This is how you open a program that you've previously created. Do not do this. Go to Finder, locate your file, and try to open it. Because what's going to happen is you're going to receive this message. We're going to go ahead and hit cancel. What you want to do is go ahead, open up a SIBA Studio, make sure your Thymio is connected and on, check serial, make sure Thymio 2 is selected, hit connect, click launch VPL, and then to the folder, find your file, robot program, and click open. So that concludes my tutorial. Good luck!